Good morning friends. Welcome back to Pannika's tutorials. In the last few videos, I have discussed about what is a token, what are the six different types of tokens are there such as keywords, identifiers, constants, strings, special symbols and operators. And in the last video, I have discussed about keywords and identifiers in detail. I hope you have watched those videos. If you did not watch those videos, I request you to go back and watch those videos and come back to this video. In this video, I want to discuss about constants in detail. So I request everyone to watch the complete video for better understanding. The constants are broadly classified into two types. One is the numerical constants and another one is the character constant. The numerical constants again classified into two types such as integer constants and real constants. The character constants are again classified into two types such as single character constants and strings. Even in the diagram you can look at here. The constants are classified into two types and again the numerical constants are classified into two types. Character constants are again classified into two types. So first let me discuss about the integer constant. Now, what is meant by constant? The constant is nothing but the value is fixed. You are not changing the value. Suppose let's take that you are saying 100. 0, 0. It is an integer constant. Okay, whose value is 100 only. If I talk in rupees, I will say that it is 100 rupees. Okay, if I talk in a value, I will say that it is 100. If I say it is a binary number, it will be 100. 0, 0. Okay, is it clear? But I am talking it as an integer constant. So I am using the digit 1, 0, 1. So even you can use the digits 1, 2, 3 because you have the digits from 0 to 9. So using those combinations of digits, you can generate the integer constants. But remember one thing. If I say 10,000 rupees, then usually we will write like this. Am I right? If I say 10,000, you will say 10, comma three zeros this is for 10,000 rupees even if I say 10,500 you will write 10,000 comma 500 but when you are writing the integer constants in the C programming long ways you should avoid the commas you should avoid the white spaces you should avoid the non digit characters such as dollar okay any hash or anything you should avoid like Usually when we write then the money, we will write even the currency symbol. But those things you should avoid when it comes to the integer constants. You should avoid the commas. You should avoid the white space. You should avoid any non-digit characters. Okay. Is it clear? Suppose if you are writing 10,000. Tell me one thing whether it is a valid. No, it is invalid integer constant because you should not use the comma. Now if I write 10. 0, 0, 0. Even this is also not a valid because you should not use any white space. Suppose if I am writing 10, 0, 0, 0 dollar, even this is not a valid integer constant. So I hope you have understood what is an integer constant, what are the rules you need to follow when you are initializing any integer constant, means when you are using any integer constant. Okay. Now, even in the integer constants, we have three types of constants. One is the decimal constant and another one is the octal integer constant and we have the hexadecimal constant. Till now whatever we have discussed is the decimal constant because the decimal number is base 10. So base 10 is nothing but you have the digits from 0 to 9. So the minimum value possible means minimum digit is 0 and the maximum digit is 9. In the number system, I have discussed about these ones in detail. If you want to watch those number system videos, I request you to go to com computer organization playlist. There I have discussed about the number system. What is the base? What is the decimal number? Octal number? Everything I have discussed in detail. Okay. So, one is the decimal and the another one is the octal which is base 8. So, you will have the digits from 0 to 7. And you have the hexadecimal which is base 16. 
you will have the digits from 0 to 9 and then a to f. Now you can ask me what is this a to f is that now you have base 16. Base 16 meaning is that you have the minimum digit is 0 and maximum digit is base minus 1 which is 15. If you look at here when I said base 10 or radix 10 the decimal number maximum digit is allowed is 9 which is base minus 1 10 minus 1 which is 9. Even in the octal number I said base 8 or radix 8 the maximum digit allowed is 7 which is 8 minus 1. Similarly when it comes to the hexadecimal which is base 16 so the maximum digit allowed is 16 minus 1 which is 15. So you should not write 15 like this. If you write 15 then people will think that it may be a 1 and 5. Am I right? Is it clear? So that's why what they have done they have used the digit from 0 to 9. To represent 10 they have used A. To represent 11 B. 12 C. 13 D. 14 E and 15 F. So these are the notations they have used to represent the values from 10 to 15 with capital A to capital F. A, B, C, D, E, F. So this is the way you have to represent the hexadecimal numbers, octal numbers and decimal numbers. Now you can ask me one question. Sir, you are saying it is base 8, base 16, all these things. But if I give the value, how it will be able to differentiate whether it is a decimal value, whether it is a octal number or it is an hexadecimal number. That is a good question. Okay. Please watch it carefully. Let's take that I am using a data type called int and I am using the variable a and I am writing it as 1000 semicolon I am completing. This I can say that it is an integer constant and also it is a decimal number. Okay. Similarly, if I use int a is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, then I can say that it is an octal number. Please remember one thing. If you have 0 initially, it's the first one. Okay. After that, you have 1, 2, 3. Okay. Then you can, this is the most significant bit. Am I right? This is the least significant bit. This is the most significant bit. If your most significant bit is 0, Okay, then you can say that it is an octal representation. If you want to represent a hexadecimal number, you should write 0, x, 1, 2, 3. So, this is the way you will represent the hexadecimal. See, this 1, 2, 3, you can change anything. I want to tell that if you have the 0 in the MSB, then you can say that it is an octal number. If you have 0, x, then it is an hexadecimal number. Now you can ask me one question. Sir, we know that as we know little bit about the C programming. So if I want to display the value of an integer, then I will use percentage D as the format specifier. Am I right? Suppose let's take that I want to print this A value. Then I will write a statement called print F. Please see this one. This P is a small letter. Maybe it looks like a capital letter for you. Print F percentage D a you will write then you will end with a semicolon so as it is an integer you are giving the format specifier as percentage d and what is the name of the variable you are giving if you are writing like this then whatever the value is there that value will be displayed let's take that this is b this is c to avoid the confusion okay is it clear sorry i should not write comma it will give the 10000 value Similarly, if I want to display this octal number, then I need to use the format specifier as percentage O. Okay. If I want to display the hexadecimal number, I have to use the format specifier as percentage X. Is it clear? Are you able to understand? Suppose to make you understand, let me discuss further. If I want to display this octal number as it is, then I will write print of percentage O B then it will display 1 2 3 as an output because you are printing it as an octal number so it will print as an octal number suppose instead of that one instead of percentage O you are writing print of percentage D 
B. Now, what is the meaning of this one? You want to print the whatever the value is there in the variable B in the integer format because percentage is for integer. So, then what will happen? This octal number will be converted into a decimal number and it will display. Are you able to understand it or not? Let me repeat again. This B is a variable which is storing the octal number but you want to print it as a decimal number. Then what it will happen? It will convert this octal number to decimal number and it will print the value. Is it clear? What is the way to convert? If you have an octal number 1, 2, 3, how you will convert into decimal number? It is very simple. 3 into 8 power 0 plus 2 into 8 power 1 plus 1 into 8 power 2. Okay. So, 3 into 8 power 1 is 3 plus 2 into 8 power 1 is 16 plus 1 into 8 power 2 is 64. So, you will get the value 83. That value will be displayed. So, if you are using the format specifier percentage O, then it will display the octal value. If you are using the percentage D, means you want to print it as a decimal number, then this octal number will be converted into a decimal number and it will be displayed. Suppose if you want to print the hexadecimal number, then you will use percentage OX, okay, and you will use the whatever the variable name, okay, then it will display the octal number, sorry, hexadecimal number. If you want to convert into a decimal, then you will write like this, percentage D and the variable name C. Then this 123 will be converted into a decimal and it will be displayed. How you will convert this 123 into, means the hexadecimal number into decimal, it is again simple, 3 into 16 power 0 plus 2 into 16 power 1 plus 1 into 16 power 2 whatever the value will come, that value will be displayed. So, this is about the integer constants. I hope you have understood about what are the rules you should follow whenever you are using any integer constants and I have discussed about the decimal, hexadecimal and octal. Now, coming to the real constants. Okay, let me discuss about the real constants. You will use the decimal values meaning is that let us take that you have 10.23 the real numbers you will use okay similarly let us take the 10.456 or 15.123 these kind of representation you will use it in the real constants usually this real constants will be represented in the form of mantis e exponent okay mantis and exponent form it will be represented we have the single precision format double precision format that i have discussed in the computer organization course okay so this is about the real constants and we will use the data type called float double long double all these things about these things i will discuss about the data types in a detail in a separate video now coming to the single character constants you have a character suppose let's take that you want to use a character c then you will use within a single quotation so this is the way you will represent the single character constants suppose if you want to represent a character a then you will represent using the single quotation so always remember one point the single character constants will be enclosed within the single quotation whereas the strings strings is nothing but a collection of single character constants are nothing but if you group all the single character constants, then you will generate a string. String is nothing but your word, okay. Suppose let us take that if I say hi, h is a one character, i is a another character. So, the single strings can be enclosed within the double quotation. Suppose let us take that hi, how, okay, are like that. These are the strings. The strings should be enclosed within the double quotation. So, I hope you have understood about the constants, integer constants, real constants, single character constants and strings. About the characters, about the strings, I will discuss in detail in separate videos. Thank you for watching the complete video. Have a nice day.